Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been like a week and I've already completed station for you guys. I honestly can't thank you enough for the reception that the house tutorial got. Like, this is by far my fastest growing video on my channel. It's already at 2k views at the time of recording this video and I've hit 100 subscribers. So we clearly have to do something special. So if you guys have any ideas for a 100 subscriber special, uh, let me know because I was not prepared for this whatsoever. I was prepared, however, to complete every piggy map in Minecraft. So let me give you a quick tour of station. As you can see, this is the entrance to the station where you start in the map. And usually I go through this way first, which takes you to this place with uh, this upstairs area locked behind lasers, the box room into the basement down there. And we have the dining area here as well. And then we get into the jail cell room with all of the prison cells and the one that's boarded up upstairs with the closet locked by the green key. And the, I, I also have the uh, courtyard out here with all of the watchtowers surrounding it. If you if you look closely in the game, there's all these watchtowers and a hole broken in by a police car. But I, I didn't put the police car there. You guys could if you wanted. But I, I decided to leave it because it's a bit of a small space. Anyways, this is the uh, basement area with uh, the place leading upstairs in here. And the room where you need the wooden plank is on this side. And of course you can see the uh, massive pool of acid in the middle and that takes us up through here into this small office area and these these rooms here with a bunch of workspaces and finally the garage with Doggy's car in it where, which you use to escape from the station at the end of the map. And I'm going to show you guys how to build all of that in this video. So let's get started. This thing is massive, so you're going to need a massive open space if you want to build this map. This is apparently, according to the Wikipedia, one of the largest maps in Piggy. So just make sure you're prepared with a nice open space to build this thing because it will take up quite a lot of it. So the first room we're building is, of course, the entrance. So start by placing two polished diorite blocks in the floor and then just place some iron doors on top of them like this. Now th this of course is the entrance to the station and the iron doors are facing inwards from the outside so in other words this side is the outside and this side is the inside. Now, something about the station's exterior is it uses different walling to the interior in most of the rooms. So, we're going to be placing two layers of walls, and I'll show you what I mean by that later. For now, we're going um, we're gonna to make the border of this entrance room. And this room is 8 wide by 10 back. So that basically just means these doors count as two out of the eight. And we're going to want to extend from the doors one, two, three each. One, two, three. Like that. So then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now extend a further one so that we can uh, make sure that it's not too small inside. And then go 10 backwards from there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then on the other side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, once again, place another block backwards and just connect the two spaces like this. And this is the border of our room. Next thing we're going to want to do is go over that entire layer but in polished diorite instead. So just quickly go around the border you've just made in polished diorite and that'll be 
the walls starting to be built up. And the next layer of wall is light blue concrete again. So just go over the polished diorite. And you can see we have a stripy blue wall, which is most of the interior of stations walling pattern. But this entrance room is uh, two floors high. So once again, go over this, but in gray concrete this time. And then we're going to do what we did on the bottom floor, but replacing the light blue concrete with lime concrete. So go over the gray with lime, and then we're basically gonna put polished diorite over that lime, and then some more lime on top of that polished diorite, and then one final layer of gray concrete. It's a pretty high wall, so it, but it's an easy wall to make. It'll just take a bit of time, as you can see here, with the amount of layers we have to make. But don't worry, this and two other rooms are the only rooms that are two floors high. So we won't be doing this very often. Anyways, once you're where I'm at, just like I said, go over the diorite with lime concrete. And we'll have a stripy blue wall and a stripy green wall on top of it, just like in-game. If the stripes are too big, then you could easily, like, either use the pattern for the exterior's walls, or just use diorite, but I feel like the uh, striped blue and green lines on the walls are an important part of station. Now, this grey concrete here is going to be the layer for our roof. And the roof, uh, basically everywhere on this floor, except for here, is grey concrete. Here, for whatever reason, if you look up, you can see the outside and the moon. So, either there is no ceiling, or the ceiling is glass. So, get some black stained glass, or just normal glass if you want to. Or don't put a ceiling, but I'm pretty sure there's some glass at least. And just on the in line with this grey concrete above the green, just fill in the entire roof with black stained glass, like I'm doing here. And then we'll be ready to make the floor pattern for this build. Just let me finish this off here, and there we go. Now. The floor is a checkerboard pattern of white and light grey, so just destroy two, just destroy a two by two in the ground and replace it with either white or light grey, and then do that for the entire flooring for this area. You could make the checkerboard patterns like smaller, like this, but they're pretty big in game, so I made them a two by two checkerboard pattern, and it looks pretty nice. I'm pretty sure it would look fine with a one by one checkerboard pattern, but I haven't really checked. I prefer, I've, I think I'd prefer this one. But the checkerboard floor is down to personal preference in how big you want it. I'm just making it a two by two here, in line with the grass. Unless you've um, built it one higher than the floor to avoid punching out all of the grass all the time. Anyways, yeah, this is just what the flooring for this place is going to be. And once we've put that in, we can start on the decorations in this room. So, as you can see, the flooring is complete. And the first thing we're going to do is make it so that you can actually get in and out of this place. So, put some stone buttons and we'll place the ones for getting into the building later. Just place stone buttons beside each door if you're using iron doors. I think they look close to the game. And then there is a, a speaker above the door, which Doggy uses to tell you to get to the garage in the start cutscene. I put a lever there, but if you guys know how to represent a speaker, then do it, because the lever doesn't exactly look like a speaker. Anyways, next we're going to place a few black stone tables, like in-house. But in this time we're using polished blackstone stairs and slabs. The first of these tables is located just in this corner, one away from this little corner here. Just placing a three by 
a free wide table like that really simple table and then just by the other corner the exact same thing so that you have this and then there is one more table in this room and that is located pretty much opposite this blackstone table so going here I don't know if it's one further back but it might be we'll see when we place the other table later next thing we're gonna want to do is grab some hang on is that gray or black uh, black wool black wool not black carpet because if you place carpet then there'll be a lot of places where you won't be able to put it because it's directly underneath something anyways you'll see what I mean um, go f go look at this wall and then count three inwards one two three like this and then the fourth one is going to be where we'll start with our carpet place here so the carpet is gonna go r like this leaving out these spaces of the floor here and then it's going to go another two forwards one two no another three so like this and then just destroy these blocks and connect them like this and the blocks in the middle of this are also going to be black car black wool and this is the carpet underneath the main table here and yeah I was right this blackstone table needs to be moved one just like that so that there's two blocks here instead so it's not exactly in line with this table next we're going to build the uh, table in the middle of the room which we're going to use dark oak stairs to do so and come to this table and see here go one inwards and this is where we're going to start our table but the stair needs to be upside down so place a block behind it and then place the stair from the top of it and you have an upside down stair then just connect the just extend the stair for all the way to the end of this carpet here and place another stair here so that you've got the table looking like this next take back the polished blackstone stairs for some chairs by the table the first one going right in this corner facing that way and the next going just here not there here and facing towards the door next thing we're gonna do is in front of this chair place a polished diorite and that's gonna be a computer and put a painting on it to show the face and the screen of the computer I prefer it when it's like the blacky one by one painting because that looks more like a computer screen but you could also make it look like a desktop like this looks like a desktop it's just in game the computer is turned off so I'm trying to get the correct painting here to show you guys but as usual with paintings in Minecraft it's really not helping luckily there are far less paintings in this build than there is in house oh I destroyed the diorite I'm pretty sure that applies with every map except possibly gallery because that's an art gallery oh my goodness I, I can't believe there we go that's the painting that I was talking about at long last so that's the painting that I would prefer next thing we're gonna want to do is there's some paper on the on this desk so you could represent that by either using white carpet or if you're in the correct update you can place item frames on top of blocks like that so place one here one here and one here just like that and for these two we can we are gonna place some paper in the item frames and we're also gonna for the other one but this one is a George Piggy missing poster and if you if you wanted to you could grab an anvil put the paper through it and then rename the paper to missing uh, dash George Piggy and then put it in the item frame and as you can see when you hover over it it'll say missing George Piggy 
So that way you can actually tell what's, what it says on the paper. You can destroy the anvil now because it's not an actual part of this room. Next thing we're going to do in this room is punch out the doorways. Because there are two doors in this room that are going to lead to the other rooms in this build. The first of the doors is on this side and it's really nice and simple. Just go two inwards from this wall and then punch it out like this. So there is two gap to this wall and this table. And then you can either continue the checkered pattern or you could place some polished diorite under the door. But it, it depends. Anyways, the door here is dark oak, as are most of the doors in basically all of Piggy. And I'm placing it at just like that, facing like this. If you don't know how to do that, then basically just punch out the block next to it and it'll face the other way for some reason. Now the next door is on the, this side, just opposite of these doors. And it's four, there's a four block gap between, okay, I'll show you here. So as you can see, there are three blocks on this side and four blocks on that side. And that is how we're placing in the door. And we're placing it in just like that. And that is basically everything in this room now complete. So we can move on to through this door here. Make sure we're going through the right door here or you could place rooms in the wrong place. So opposite these doors, the door we've most recently placed, we're going through this one. And that's going to take us to the uh, stairway room with the lasers. Okay, so this room is pretty simple. It's just eight, an 8x8 eight eight space, so just grab, grab your wallings and we're gonna just count 8 from this wall. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And on the other side as well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then go another block forward and just connect the two like that. And then we're going to basically follow our entire walling pattern, including this second floor up around this entire 8x8 eight eight space we've just made. And I'll meet you guys once I've done that. Okay, brilliant. I've finished the walling and the floor is also the same thing. We're just going to continue the checkerboard pattern. But one thing I should note, this corner right here is going to lead to the basement area with the boxes in that room so just leave this little corner there and don't fill it in we'll come back to it later and then it'll make sense why it's not been filled in i mean you could actually fill it in if you want because the way that i did it you can't actually use the boxes to get up to this floor in minecraft because of the roof and how close it is to your head. But Roblox characters are a lot smaller and have a lot greater jump power. So they're actually able to make it and we're not. Unless you like find a different way of making this um, hole here. But the way I did it, you won't be getting very far if you try that. Anyways, just like I've done leaving that hole in the corner. Next thing we're going to want to do is in this checkerboard pattern here, this light grey square, there is a box. So place an oak wood plank on that square of this and if you want you could place an oak slab on top of it because it is a rather tall box but you don't have to. Anyways from this box go diagonal this way and then count four blocks of light blue concrete. One, two, three, four. And then put diorite on top of that and light blue concrete on top of that again. And you, no, don't put gray concrete because that'll mess with the flooring of this room we're gonna make up here. Because 
there is a wall here in the middle of the room that is connected to the lasers blocking the stairs. And there are also walls by, by the stairs. So come in one, two from this wall, and then that's where we're gonna put a wall. And then another two gap, which is where the stairs are going, and another wall. Now as for the stairs, just place them in between the walls on this um, gray concrete layer, and then just continue them down. You should probably um, place polished diorite underneath them like this to kind of clean it up. And just like that is how the stairs are going in. Now the ceiling for this room is light gray terracotta and that's also going to be the floor for the upstairs that we're about to start building. So just fill in on in line with this gray concrete all light gray terracotta but leaving space by the stairs to make sure you can actually get up here and won't get stopped. So just leave as little space as possible, which I'm pretty sure is this. Yeah. And that's all of that bottom room except for a door that we'll place in once we're finished up here. Now, as for this upstairs room, there's a... It's like a commissioner's room of sorts, so there's a few decorations that we're going to need to put in here. Starting with two tables directly opposite each other, and they're just in these corners by the stairs. Both free wide as usual, and really simple, just placing them in. But on top of, uh, on top of the one in this corner here, we're gonna get some polished andesite and place it like here because that's where there's uh, the purple safe containing the gun and like we did in last build you could put a crimson button on it to represent the fact that it's the purple safe we'll do the same with the yellow safe once we put that in now next take some either normal stained glass or black stained glass and um, come to this other table and punch out the four diorite in the middle here, then replace it with the black stained glass because there is a window here. And it leads into the dining area that we're going to build once this room is finished. Next, we're gonna need some dark oak fence and also some carpet. So get out your dark oak fence and we're gonna need brown and red carpet. So brown carpet and red carpet just like that and we're going to place in a table just here so one two one two no one away from the wall on each side here so as you can see you come to this back wall count one just go one diagonal and then place a fence and then on this side as well and then extend it towards this wall by one and that's where we're placing our table now in between this fence is all red carpet and then the table itself is going to be brown carpet just like this you could place red wool underneath the fences but it would uh, disrupt the ceiling down here so I'm not doing that in my build it looks fine anyways without having to do that, so you can just leave it like I did. Anyways, next there is a shelf just directly in the middle of this table. Just like that on this wall. So as you can see, it lines up perfectly with the center of the table. And that is made of spruce trapdoors. The final decoration in this room is a painting and that is going it's a one by two and it's going right here in line with the table on this wall with the purple safe so just place any nice looking painting here just like that and that's this room pretty much complete what we're gonna do next is uh, fill in the walls no not the walls we've just done that we're gonna fill in the roof 
which is grey concrete going all around this place just like I'm doing here. And once we've filled in this roof we're going to place in some lights otherwise it'll get incredibly dark in here and you won't be able to see. Now the lights I used in my uh, previous station build were shroom light but you could use like glowstone or redstone lamps or any light really. But if you're doing what I did, grab the shroom light and just grab whatever block you're going to use as the light and I'll show you where to place it. Which is just either side at the end of this table. So if you stand in front of the table like this, like in front of each table's fence post, then look up just place the lights there and just like that is that room complete next thing we're going to do is punch out the door to the dining area which is perfectly in line with this door so just walk like that and then punch out these two and we are perfectly in line to start the dining area now as for this dining area's door it's going to be placed in just the same as the door on this side. So, as you can see, they're both facing the same way. Perfect. But one more thing I noticed once I'd finished the build. Some places in this build did get pretty dark. So, I put a soul torch just by there. You could put one on the other side as well to make it uh, equal. And that'll just make the place brighter and make it easier to see. Anyways, now we're going to build the dining area. And the dining area is just a simple uh, 8 wide and 11 back. So just count 11 off of the walls here like we've done with this room. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then count 12 because the 12th block is where the back wall is going to be. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then this is the final room that takes up... Well, it isn't the final room that takes up both floors, but it's the final room you're going to have to use the uh, lime concrete pattern to do. Because the jail cell room uses the same pattern as the outside, which doesn't use any lime concrete. I'll show you guys what I mean once we get to that room, because then it'll be easy to explain. But what I'm doing right now is just going and doing exactly what I've done for the rest of this place. And that's, that's basically what you're going to do for the dining room. Just take this walling all around this place and take the flooring it's the exact same and the ceiling is also just going to be grey concrete like the commissioner room we just made so I'll meet you guys once I'm finished uh, basically getting the walls floor and roof of this place done because you already know what to do for it okay I have um, finished the uh, basic uh, wallings and floor and all that for this place uh, the first thing I'm going to do now is place the soul torches around because it's pretty dark. So they're just two away from each wall. Really easy. So count one, two in from each side of each wall. Except for here. This is a doorway. So don't put a soul torch there because, um, well, you won't, be, you won't be keeping it for very long. There's a door going there. And there is also a door that's going to lead to the outside going in on this side, in this part of the wall. And I'm pretty sure that's going here. It's either going here or here. Yeah, it's going there. So ignore where I've just punched and punch here instead. So from this doorway, one, two, three, door. And then there'll be four on the other side. So in other words, it's in line with every single other door that we've put on this side. I don't know why I thought otherwise. Next thing we're going to do is place in the furniture for this place, of course. Which, there is only one thing in here, 
there isn't uh, some kind of stools or tables and all that. And that is some kind of closet that goes on this wall here, just by the jail cell area. And it's gonna go just like this. So there's a one block gap between this soul torch and this closet that we're making out of polished andesite. And a two block before you reach this doorway. And we're just gonna place some iron doors on it, not like that, facing each other preferably, so that it looks more like some kind of cabinet or container. And next thing we're gonna do is build the tables and seating and all of that that's scattered around this place. Not just in this room, but we're just doing the ones in this room for now. And those are um, one in from each wall. So there's, there's a two space between this wall and a one space between this wall. In other words, here. And we're going to place a diorite wall with white carpet on it for the table. And then same place, but opposite side. And then doing the same. So one from here, two from there, one from here, two from there. And we should end up with our tables being placed all around just like that. Now as for the seatings, they're a lot smaller and I don't know how exactly how to replicate them. So I basically just popped a bunch of slabs around these tables. Uh, just one block this distance between the table and the stools. And there are only two like this on this side. And on the other side, they're just simply going in like this. Uh, if you don't want this one touching the wall, then just place it right next to it. That's what I did. And this door, we're going to place in uh, like this, but facing the other way. So, like this. That's going to be the door to the outside. And the door to the jail cell room doesn't have a door. It's a doorway. So that's all of this room complete. That was relatively fast. And now we're going to move on to the gel cell room, which is a bit different. And I'll show you guys how once I've uh, changed a few things in my inventory up and got the correct things to begin work on this room. Okay, guys. So this gel cell room is a bit different to the others. Um, we're not going to use this wall, we're going to instead build another wall behind it. Don't worry, this doorway is actually a bit larger than the others in game as well. So we're not straying too far from the game. But basically, for this walling, we're going to have the first three, three layers being made out of light blue concrete. And then the rest going up is all polished diorite up until this grey a concrete layer which is still grey concrete. And that is also going to be the walling for the entire outside of the station. So we're basically also, we're going to later on go around this entire place with this walling pattern unless you can't be bothered which fair game. But I'm just going to do it for this side for now because that's going to be important for when we're doing the a courtyard area so just building it up like this and then we'll get back to the jail cells and the jail cell room we're gonna start by uh, well we've already counted five but it is 12 wide on this side so no we've counted four this is the wall we've counted four one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then once we've got this 12, we're going to come to this place and go another 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then place another 20th for the wall. Um, just then we're going to go around this whole place. One sec, let me just count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I need to place another 
otherwise the place will be too small. I hope you guys have been uh, taking note of that. So like, when I say we're gonna go like, say for example five, one, two, three, four, five by six, you don't go here after you've placed the fifth block and go one, two, three, four, five. You, you actually place a sixth block and then start counting. So what I mean is there are five blocks from the inside, not just going all around. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Anyways, just connect these two corners and then build up the walls. And the floor for this place is also not the same. Instead we're using smooth stone and grey concrete. And it's just a striped pattern rather than a checkerboard pattern. Going this way, all the way to the edge like that. So there are two blocks of smooth stone, and then there would be two blocks of grey concrete, and then there would be another two blocks of smooth stone. And that's what the floor for this place is going to look like. As for the roof, it's still just grey concrete. That's the only thing that's the same in this jail cell room. I'll continue that all the way around and finish up, and then I'll meet you guys there. Okay guys, I'm done, but uh, I've kind of made a slight miscalculation with this very back wall here. We're not going 19 backwards, we're going 20 backwards. So uh, if, if you're also done, just kind of destroy this back wall and put it one block further backwards. It's really not that bad a miscalculation, but... It, it is going to screw up the build if we keep it there, so just quick fix, Re replace that block and just move it one block backwards and then that will just fix the error. I, I don't know how I managed to make that mistake and I obviously I apologise for having made that mistake. Because that could have screwed up the build if I didn't notice that the flooring pattern was a little bit off. Which, by the way, if you uh, didn't understand my description of the flooring pattern, you could just get a look at it right now. It's, the flooring for this place is going to look like this. It's really simple. It's, n it's, not di it's not more difficult than what we were just doing. In fact, it's probably less difficult because checkerboard patterns are tedious to do. Anyways, that's this uh, mistake pretty much fixed now. Just have to replace this part of the floor with grey concrete. And then we're once again going to start with the lighting because it is too dark to effectively get anything done in here right now. Anyways, for the lighting, we're going to need to get our soul torches back. And most of it is going on this wall here. Just, yeah. So, um, first thing we're going to do is place the door. That'll give us a lot of light. There's a door to the outside here. Counting three blocks inwards. And then the fourth block. So, I'll put some dye right there. Um, it's facing this way. And you should probably make sure the other door is facing the same way for consistency. Because they're both unlocked by the same key. And our first soul torch is just upward diagonal from this door and then another one forwards just like that. And then now I'm going to uh, kind of like make the area that the stairway to the basement is going. Which one stripe, two stripe, three stripe and then punching out these two to make a 4x2 here. So as you can see it's by this smooth stone stripe here and from that staircase we're gonna go and place a soul torch on this part level with this soul torch over here and that's gonna basically finish our lighting. The rest of the lighting is shroom light inside of the jail cells, which we haven't built yet, but we're about to build. So, to start with the jail cells, we're gonna need to build a 
wall in the middle of this room. And that wall is going four blocks away from each wall on this side. But let me just quickly see how far from that wall it's going. So it's going to go three blocks away. So four blocks from the uh, sides and three blocks from the front and back. Just kind of like that. And that should leave you with a... Uh, hold on. Hold on, I'm gonna just real quick see check something because this is one block too small. Okay, that makes sense. I've not just gone and made another mistake, guys, don't worry. Uh, it's actually just gonna be three blocks away from this wall. And then in the middle of this just gonna extend it all the way back until there is a um, I'd say like this so there's a four block space from this back wall and that should leave us room for about four jail cells one two three four yeah so the jail cells are two by two here so, as long as you can fit four of those like this, then, yeah, that's correct. Um, there is five in the actual game, but in Minecraft, without making this room absolutely giant, there is no room for five, just four. It doesn't matter, though. Anyways, on this side, this wall here, we're also going to make four jail cells, but they're not two by two, they're only one by two. So, just... Follow along those jail cells there, but on this wall, making four of them directly next to these ones. Next, we're just going to build up these ones so that they are just like this. Just building up the wall. Now, the next jail cells are... On this back wall here there are a lot of jail cells in this room guys and it might get a little confusing but it's fine and we're gonna place a line there and then we're gonna build uh, I'd say like another four jail cells one two three four so just like that so this jail cell connects with that wall and it should also destroy a door here because there is that's where there's a closet we'll put the door in for that later right now i'm just focusing on the rest of uh, these jail cells now i'm pretty sure the jail cells uh yeah they're roofed off on this layer so just uh Cover up the gel cells once you get to this layer, like this. And then we'll build gel cells directly on top of these gel cells, but this time made of diorite. But before we do that, we should probably do the inside of these gel cells. In fact, to uh, save some fidgeting, I would do that just now before we place a roof. Because some of these jail cells have beds and some don't. The ones that have beds, uh, these ones are some of them. So place some beds inside of these jail cells, like that. I'm pretty sure the ones opposite also do. So placing some beds like that. And if you want, there are lights in these cells, so you could place a single block of shroom light above each cell like this just making sure that every cell has one if you're gonna do this and that'll uh, that'll light the place up a lot more and it'll also light up the inside of the cells now you can't do this for every cell in this room because some of them like those ones are just one by ones like that no one by twos 
So only the two by twos in the center are gonna have shroom light in them and beds. Now obviously once we've placed all of those we're gonna place the iron bars but we'll do that once we've finished with the cells up here. So basically do what we've just did but make it out of diorite. Oh and also make sure this layer is the floor so that the jail cells are looking like this and not like this. So just going on top of every single jail cell with, that we've just made and putting another jail cell. All of the jail cells we've just put. Uh, one thing I should mention, in game for whatever reason these jail cells don't actually have beds in them but these ones do. So place beds on the, in the jail cells on this side on the top layer but not on this side. Still place the shroom light though because that'll keep the place lit up. Now next we're gonna place the uh, stairway to get up to these next jail cells and that is just gonna be polished black stone stairs and slabs. So just what I've done from this corner just build the staircase like that and then we're gonna place slabs on the top half of this block and take it all the way across there and then the slabs are gonna be too wide for going across here with these two gel cell sides and gonna take that all across to this side which is just going to be one wide again and we'll finish that side off later because there's some stairs there and we're taking it also across there just real quick let me find let me see where the stairs are exactly okay so from this we're also taking that backwards uh, we're placing a slab here as well but just connect it around these cells and then in this corner right here place another slab and then the stairs can go in so I'm just fiddling around so that I can um, place this stair properly just like that with a slab behind this stair and they'll take you back down here. And that is the uh, stair, stairs and place around these top cells done. Next we're gonna place in the cells iron bars. But uh, some of these cells are open and for the cells that are opened there aren't any beds in them. I'm gonna show you guys which cells are open starting with uh, this side on this side uh, no I'm, I'm looking at the wrong side completely this side on this side none of the cells are open so just place in the iron bars like this but this one here is boarded up and needs the hammer to open so you can like place spruce planks or something over that cell now on this side this cell is open so we're gonna open it by just placing two iron bars like that and that shows it being open and of course there's no bed in the open cells and uh, the rest on this side are shut. On this side there are also no open cells so just close them all like this and on this side I'm pretty sure there aren't any open cells no none of these cells are open either but remember, none of them have beds regardless. So just fill them all in like that. Now underneath there is an open cell and it's this one. So open this cell 
and destroy the bed and then the rest of them are closed just like this now oh over here just let me find the right pictures for this place there are I'm pretty sure there is an open one over here uh, yeah it's uh, on this side this one is open so to put that into perspective this one so I'll destroy the bed in there and fill the rest of these in now from what I can see in this picture none of the ones on this side are open no there is one that is open on this side this one so open this cell up and close off all the others finally the bottom place here there are no open cells here although I don't know if that's game accurate because I remember finding the red key in this cell quite often so I'm pretty sure this cell is open like that you you could keep it either open or shut it's up to you but I would open it because I'm pretty certain you can get the red key in that cell I've played station a lot now there are still some decorations left in this jail cell room it's not fully complete one of them is a tipped over bed which you could represent with diorite stairs and that's just going facing like that two away from this where the closet's going and then there's a bunch of furniture on this side as well which one of them is also a tipped over bed and this time it's going um, just far away from this wall here facing like this now we're gonna get back our uh, dining table and all that equipment because there are some tables and that in here the first table is in this corner placing a white cap on top of it and it has slabs surrounding it like that the uh, second table is on the opposite side just like that and has slabs surrounding it like that and then that is the jail cell room pretty much complete but one thing we could do for later on is place in the stone stairs leading to the basement just let me find normal stone stairs oh where are they stone stairs there and that's just going in this hole that we made earlier just stone stairs we'll fill in the dirt and all that later on once we're do like full on just doing the basement area for now we're moving on to this closet here and it is a really small room just a three by three so place a door and then continue the flooring from this room just make a, making a three by three like this and then wall around it but not fully because I'm pretty sure this this closet doesn't extend all the way up to the roof like that so instead I'm pretty sure you should only go up to the light blue concrete and then stop so in other words just like this and there is basically nothing in this closet other than some andesite shelving and a shroom light to light it up so yeah just place some grey concrete on top of this light blue concrete and like that 
that's the ceiling for this closet. And dead center is the shroom light. Now we're going to need some polished andesite stairs and slabs for the shelving. And it is really simple shelving, just going three upside down stairs on top of each other, either side, and slabs connecting them, just like that. And that's all that that shelving consists of. Next thing that we're going to work on is uh, we're going to go all the way back to our entrance room. And once we have done that, we're going to build this room here from the entrance room. And I'll meet you guys once I have all of the materials we're going to need for this room. This entrance room's walling back by seven. So make sure you're in line with the wall here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then um, just go all the way around like this. And then follow the walling of this place, but only to this gray concrete. And then the uh, ceiling is going to be made of light gray terracotta. And just also follow the flooring pattern. And then I'll meet you guys once I'm done. Okay, and this is the uh, basic layout of this room. As you can see, the uh, roof is light grey terracotta, not grey concrete. Make sure you've got that right. And what we're going to do next is place in the lighting. In my uh, original build, all I did was put a soul torch, like, right there. But if you want, you could put more than one soul torch, just like one on each side like that to like, make it all symmetrical. But that's not really important. The main part is the uh, doorway here that will lead into the hallway. And that is two blocks from this wall right there. Now we just get my die right back. There. And we're just placing it in like that. Next thing we're going to do is a uh, go one from this side of the wall and then punch it out because that's where one of uh, the uh, vent things that you crawl through is going to go. And then what we're going to do now is basically destroy all of this floor except for the very edge and replace it all with brown wool because that's there's a carpet covering most of this room and underneath all of the uh, desks and computers and stuff that I'm about to place. So just like this, leaving out the very border of the floor, placing brown carpet all along and that'll get us uh, ready for placing all of the uh, shelves and desks. You, you shouldn't use, you could use brown carpet but once again, you'll need to place brown wool underneath where we're putting all of the things. Now, the first thing we're placing in here is just... Uh, a, the desks... Well, we're placing four desks, actually. And they're all, like, basically going right by each other. There's a one block space between the ones here. And... They're all also one away from the uh, corners of the carpet. So basically placing them like I just have, like this. Really simple. And we're, we're now going to place the uh, things around these desks. This one in this corner here has a polished blackstone stair here for a chair facing like that. And the same thing goes for this one here, except this stair is going to go here, like that. The next two have two different things. This one here has an item frame here with some paper on it. And finally, this one has a computer placed here. Let me just run back through and get a painting. 
just like the other computer, it's preferable if you get the uh, black painting like that a lot quicker this time. Just because, like, it looks more like staticky or something. I don't know, you don't have to. But that's actually this room already complete. Just, uh, well, just leave this space for later because we'll be doing stuff with that once we once we cover the basement. As for now, what we're going to do is this hallway here, which we're basically going to take take the uh, walls here and extend them backwards as usual. It goes nine backwards and it's three wide. So take the three blocks here. So extend one either side of your door to give you a three block space. And then just take these walls back nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then an another to be part of the wall and just take it all back as usual. And just as usual, place in the uh what finish the walls and placing the ceiling and floor and I'll see you guys once I've done that yet again and that's the basic shape of this hallway done there's not much in this hallway so it won't really take us very long and once again the ceiling is light grey terracotta first thing we're going to do is light it up by placing a soul torch just here you can also place one light on the other side there as well but uh, what we're going to do now is place a door just here and that's going to take us into a small office -y area with the yellow safe in it. That's the area we'll be building next. And then there's another door and this is the main exit door that leads into the garage. And it's just going here so there are four blocks on each side from this door which will make it easy to count. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as you can see. Just placing it in like this. If you want to like represent the uh, thingy that you need the wrench for next to the door, you could place an item for him like that and maybe even put something in it. Now, there is also a toolbox in this hallway and I'm not entirely sure how to represent that. So all I did was put a red never brick slab there. Now, as for the basement stairway, it's really simple. Just these middle three blocks on these two layers of the wall are being punched out. And now that we've done that, we're going to move on to this really small office place. Because that's everything in that hallway. Now, this office is just extending the wall another five back one two three four five and that gives us a five by three space to work with for the office so once again all the walls and that are going to be filled in just nice and simple this time because it's a really small space and then we can get to work on what's actually inside of this place. Okay, so this office space is like really tiny. First thing we're going to do is uh, go to counter the center of this wall and then place a shroom light dead center of this room so that the place is just a bit lighter. Next we're going to take a spruce trap door and really easy just place a single shelf there. Then we're going to uh, take these blocks here, so uh, one away from the uh, doorway here and two away from the back here and this is all going to be red wool. Then we're going to take some polished blackstone stairs and some dark oak stairs, place the polished blackstone stairs here just behind the carpet. And then place the dark oak stairs on the carpet like this. No, didn't mean to destroy that. So that it's upside down. And then place an item frame on it 
once again containing some uh, paper with whatever rotation you want. And finally for this room, really quick, we're gonna just place some polished andesite with a birch button on, just there like that, because that is the yellow safe. And that is this office complete, meaning that now what we're gonna move on to is the basement area, which is gonna be pretty time consuming. It's likely the uh, biggest place in this whole station. So we're gonna start of course by making the stairways down there. So to start on the stairways we're gonna uh, just place stone stairs yeah in line with the wall like that. And then we're gonna continue those stairs down until uh, okay I'm pretty sure we're gonna need four stairs four flights of stairs so one two three and then a fourth real quick just let me place that in this is gonna take a lot of punching out dirt so I hope hopefully you have the patience for that but yeah just until you are this far down that way the uh, the uh, grass the grass ceiling above you is three blocks high from the floor. That puts us perfectly in position to get to work on this basement area. Now the basement's walling is different from everywhere else in this build. We're gonna need some smooth stone and some red terracotta. And the, the top and bottom layers of the wall are smooth stone leaving the uh, middle layer to be red terracotta. Now for the roofing uh, it would be just normal stone but then like the place connects with the jail cell room and that fit and that place is flooring so I just like punch out this place until you reach a jail cell room and then continue the jail cell rooms flooring all around the basement area for the basement ceiling. So that just makes sure that the gel cells flooring isn't at all disrupted. Um, this, this here, this wall when you've just got off the stairs, that's, that could be completely grey if, if you're like following what I'm doing completely. So just like that. Anyways, um, we're not going to build the main part of the basement until we're done with the uh, place by the stairs. Because otherwise it could get pretty confusing. Uh, the main entrance to the basement is just five blocks backwards once you've got off the stairs. So this is one, two, three, four, five. And then just punch out this... Uh, free wide area and continue the walls all the way back and the roof too. Trust me, uh, what, if you look at your gel cell room uh, you'll know what to do for the ceiling pattern of the basement. So just like this and oh the floor by the way the floor is gonna be grey concrete so replace this stone here, or it might be some other block like dirt to you, but just replace it with grey concrete. And that's the uh, entrance to the basement. Well, not fully complete because there's this space up here. Uh, that's really simple, just take it to here, all around the stairs, and then just fill it in just like this and uh, that layer there is all going to be grey concrete the layer of grass you see right now just replace that all with grey concrete there and then uh, 
get the light gray terracotta, of course, to roof it off. And there you go. Now, it's going to get really dark at times in the basement. So you might want to place some temporary lighting or something. Anyways, uh, where I just place the torch, so right here where I've just surrounded with torches, there's going to be a door. So, yeah, just here from the door, well, the stairs, there's a door. Just placing a soul torch to make sure you guys can see. That's not going to stay there. And this is going to be like a closet area. And that's where we're going to build now before we deal with this massive basement space that we're going to build. So I'll get all of the stuff out for that. And then I'll teach you guys how to build this really easy and small closet. Okay, so this closet is just a 5 by 3 space. So begin by punching 2 either side of the door. And that'll end you up with 5 blocks of space. Then just punch another two backwards and then completely punch out the rest of the dirt that's left in this space. Now we're just gonna do the flooring and the walling and make sure your roofing lines up with the uh, basement floor, no jail cell floor. Because if it doesn't it might cause a few discrepancies. but. Once this full basement is complete, you'll be able to sort that easier. So I wouldn't worry about that too much for now. Okay, so just like this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is place the lantern in here. Otherwise, uh, it'll get too dark because I need to destroy this torch. Yeah, the lantern is really simple. It's just like going straight in the center of this roof right here. And right by that lantern, you go to the left one and then punch that out. And it should perfectly line up with this up here. Because you go down here and you end up in the closet. So, just like that. Next thing we're going to do is make some uh, polished blackstone shelving. Which is really easy and quick. Just placing three upside down on top of each other like that. And then more right beside it. Making it a uh, two by two, two, two wide and three high. Just like that. And then there's only one more thing in this closet. And that is some spruce shelving. And that's just three wide. Just like that. And that's the closet place complete. Next thing we're going to make is the uh, massive open space in this basement. And that's the part that could get time consuming because this place gets big. And you're going to need a lot of lights. So, as you can see, this, uh, fire, this space here is going to be where the wall is. So just just do a real quick count again from the stairs. One, two, three, four, five. So there should be five like I have. And once you've got that five, go one forward from the wall and then start counting. So you should count ten backwards from each side of the wall. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And from the other side as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that should leave you with a twenty-five long area. just punch out the rest of this and next what we're gonna do is uh, from one of these corners that you've just punched out you're gonna want to punch another eight to this side so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 
four, five, six, seven, eight. And that leaves you with nine blocks there for the uh, width. Now, uh, now that you've punched ten blocks either side there, and then another eight back here to get a 25 by 9 space. Count another 24 from here, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And then just punch out another 7 and that should line you up with the other corner. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So now you have a, a 25 by 9 spacing. It's really big, and you're gonna need to punch out all of this dirt in the center, and then take your walling and ceiling and floor all the way around this massive space. So, once again, it should be 25 along here and 9 along there. If you've done that correctly, then, uh, then you should have no problems later on. But just to make sure you've got the 9, there is something you can do. Count 1, 2, 3, and then punch out 3, and then count another 1, 2, 3, and then you've got 9. As for the 25, if you want to like double check to make sure you've got that, you're going to need to do some uh, long counting. But uh, I'll meet you guys once I've punched out this entire space of dirt and filled in everything for this space so that we can get to work on what's actually contained in here. So as you can see, I've punched out all of the dirt in this place, but I'm not completely done. That's because I want to show you guys something. Um, these these three blocks in the middle of the floor, all the way across, you aren't filling them in with grey concrete. So instead you're going to punch them out. And I'll show you guys to do this now because this is going to give you some light if you do exactly what I do. This is, uh, this is where there's going to be a massive acid pool going all the way across this place, like there is in the game. And the way that I represented that actually makes it glow as well. What you're going to want to do for this is, once you've punched out that free wide area, going all the way across the 25 long room, um, punch out all of the stone here and replace it all with shroom light and then put green carpet on top of it and that's gonna go all the way along here one block underneath where the grey concrete is going uh, the walls and ceiling are still gonna be the same all the way around though it's just this uh, floor part here with the acid that you should be aware of and that's gonna provide us with most of our light because the carpet isn't blocking the light from the shroom light oh and uh, this would work with any other light block not just shroom light so you can use any light block you want underneath the lime carpet you could use glowstone or sea lanterns it really doesn't matter I've just been using shroom light a lot so I used it underneath here as well so yeah now I'm going to meet you guys once I've completely filled in this space and done all the acid as well. Alright guys, 20 years later and I'm finished at last. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, don't panic if like, you know, you can see the, the floor, the ceiling of the basement from the uh, ground. Most of this is getting covered up later, so uh, don't worry about all of it. For now, we're going to worry about the basement itself. And as you can see, I have all the acid in it. It's got all, and all of it has shroom light underneath it. What we're going to do next is, uh, just real quick, replace the stone by this acid with black concrete, just to, like, 
signify some kind of drain or something like there is in the actual game. Next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, pay attention so that we place the decorations on the correct side of this basement area. And the first one of these is, real quick, there's a box here. So in between, like this, just put a box there, nice and easy. The next box is right here, so on this side with the closet, right there is a box. The next box is on the other side, count one, two, three, and then go to the very edge of the acid here and place it. Next thing we're going to do is place in the doorways and make sure you've got the correct doorways in the correct places. This side with the box we've just placed is going to have a doorway just there and then a one block there because that's the plank area that you crawl out of. And then the other side is going to have a doorway here but only on this side not on the side with the stairway on this side. And the final doorway is perfectly center, just like that. Opposite the stairs, perfectly in center, like that. Now we're gonna place the doors in correctly. And this first one is just gonna be placed in like this. Next one, is going to be placed in uh, just like this. Yep. And the final one is going to go in uh, like this. There. Now, I don't know why I got rid of my spruce stairs and all that because there is actually another spruce table shelving thingy that I have to make. And it's right by this door. Make sure you've got the correct area. A lot of this place looks the same at the minute. But just by this door, pretty sure it's just uh, one block space from it like that. Yep, one block. Place the stair. But this time it's four wide rather than three wide, so place two slabs and then the other stair. Next thing we're going to do is there's some, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, some uh, weird uh, container thing with wheels. But what what's really important is that it's orange, so we're using smooth red sandstone to replicate it. And we're just putting two stairs facing each other, three away from the table, like that, and two away from the door. Next, we're gonna get some more blackstone shelving, so count five from the, this door. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth, we're beginning our blackstone shelving, which is uh, three high and three wide as usual. Just like that. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all of the decorations in this room, except one thing is left now, and that is the uh, plank. The plank in this room is going right in line with this part of the table, so count in three from the wall, one, two, three, and on the fourth is why we're placing our plank. If I, I'd recommend placing it facing this way rather than placing it facing this way because then if you see the uh, chain parts kind of connect to each other and makes it look a little bit nicer. Anyways, the next room we're going to make is this room off by the side here with the uh, plank that you need to place yourself in it. It's really easy, just break three blocks from this door and then dig it out until you reach the other side in, li in line with both walls. If you can't tell, just uh, yep, that's in line. And it's just three wide 
like this. So just punch out all the rest of the dirt here and also continue the acid into here as well. So um, the acid is here, so one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, like that. And that's where the acid in this room is going. Also, uh, the uh, this place here, this part. Oh, uh, I'm wrong about this wall. It needs to go one further back, just like that. So it's not perfectly in line with the door. It's just like that. So it's nine. It's nine wide, just like the. Uh, rest of the basement and just free wired like this and then just punch all the rest of this out continue the ceiling and the acid anyways what I was saying is like this here the acid goes like a little bit further back so place the black concrete here rather than in line with the wall because the acid kind of like goes underneath the wall I'm just gonna place the acid right now so destroying all of this stone and replacing it with shroom light or any other light block and then placing green carpet over it just like that and there's going to be a plank in this room as well as some blackstone shelving. Once I've just finished the uh, walling and the roofing. So just make sure you get the roofing pattern right. If you've done it exactly like I have then it'll be like this. So this is... I probably don't have to cut because this room is very small so uh, I'm just gonna punch out all of this and like I said all this really in here is just some shelving and the plank half the time you don't even have to go in this room in order to beat the map but yeah just continuing the walling all the way around this room no different really quick like that and we're done so the shelving in question is going to be really quick and easy to do it's just by this part with the place you need to crawl through just another free high free wide just like that and the plank is going directly in the center of the acid just like this and that's that room complete the next room we're gonna make is over here the box room which is slightly different and also doesn't really function properly in Minecraft so we're gonna we're gonna start this room by uh, going punching eight backwards from this dirt so one two three four five six seven eight and that's the entire width of this room and it's also six wide like this so three from so punch one from the door going that way and then another four this way so like this oh and you'll soon see that you've ended up back up here which is exactly where we want to be so if you if you have this uh, 2 by 2 visible there then that's perfect if you don't then you'll need to do some readjusting with the proportions maybe like go back a little further backwards into the video anyways uh we're going to do exactly as we've been doing, just uh, line the acid up so that these three blocks are all going to be where the acid in this room is going. And uh, the, the ceiling in this room is also different because as you can see 
if we use the ceiling we've been doing for all of the basement, we're going to disrupt this place here. So, uh, I feel, I feel you should just, uh, use the, uh, flooring of these upper rooms, which means that the roofing has basically alre already been put in for you. Just either replace this play this part with the rest of the flooring or use polished diorite because that's where the wall is. And again, just uh, the rest of it is all the same. Grey concrete, acid going there, the walls. So I'll just see you when I've done that and then we'll place the boxes. Okay, yeah, just like that. So like I said, the only difference is this room has to all the others in the basement is that the ceiling here is is made to match the uh, floor, the upper floors here. Now, as usual, we're going to make sure that there's black concrete here where the acid is. And underneath here can just be grey concrete. Now, the boxes. We're going to need to destroy some of this carpet to fit them in. So, this 2x2 two two here and then leave a gap. And then another 2x2, two two, and then leave a gap, and then another 2x2. Two two. So, the, completely leaving the acid by this wall. Now we're just going to place wooden bl wooden planks above those. And then we're going to place a slab on this one. And then we're going to place two more layers of oak plank on these. And then a slab on this one. And then on this one, one more oak plank layer, and then slabs. So it'll be looking like this, and it also will not function. So unless you guys can think of a way to get this to work, which I can't, then you won't actually be able to use this place to get up to the higher floors. You'll have to use the two stairways. But that is that room completed now. And that leaves only one part of the basement left. And that is this room that's going to take us back up to the jail cell area. And that is just a really simple 9x9 nine nine area. So. All that means is that we just need to punch out a 9x9 nine nine space. I'm pretty sure the door is in the centre of this. So, what that means is that this is one out of the nine. So, uh, if you punch... One second. I'm pretty sure if you punch four either side, then that'll work. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then, if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And then just punch another 8 back from there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's your 9x9 nine nine space. Ooh. As you can see, guys, that's exactly what we want to happen. If you built the stone stairs in the gel cell room earlier, then you should see them once you're building this room. And that's exactly what we want because this room's purpose is to get you back up into that gel cell room. So, just kind of finish punching out this 9x9 nine nine space. And, uh, fill, in, fill it in with, well, only one part is different, and that is that the floor of this place is light grey concrete, rather than being normal grey concrete. So, replace all the stone here, or it might be dirt for you, with light grey concrete, not normal grey concrete. So, like this. If you want, since I've placed the door like this, you could uh, put light grey concrete underneath the door. Just kind of like that. And I'll see you guys once I've uh, got this entire room punched out. And just like that, this, room's, it, this room is done but we've not done the uh, interior design and like I said the floor is light grey concrete rather than grey concrete 
And you probably noticed that the roof was already filled in for you because we've already done the jail cell room. Now, uh, by this stair, we're gonna, by these stairs, all of this is just gonna be replaced by stone. So, just make the back of these stairs stone. And next, we're gonna um, place some place some little areas in either side to this room. So, what I'm talking about was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Like that. Do this with your what with your walls, and do the same on the other side. Cause like, there's little areas like this in the game for some reason. And the flooring inside of them is white concrete, so just replace these with white concrete for the in-betweens of those. I don't know exactly what they're there for, but they are there. And right by them, there's a one block gap between, between each, and then there's two pillars in the middle of the room, just like this. And either side of these pillars, we're going to put some soul lanterns, just like this. That way the place is really lit up. And the last thing that we're going to need here is uh, just some spruce desk. So get your spruce stairs and slabs yet again. And just by this this uh, staircase right here, make a free wide table like that. And that is the basement completely done at long last. Probably the most time consuming part of this build. And now we're ready to move on to the outside courtyard area. And this place is slightly bigger than the basement, but we don't have to punch out a bunch of dirt everywhere, so it might not take as long. This place is a 26 wide and 9 backwards. And most of the flooring for that is going to be smooth stone. So get your smooth stone out. And, uh... We're going to start this off, just uh, I'm pretty sure that's free behind that door, just let me get a good look at some of these screenshots, yeah, we're going to start that counting by uh, this furthest door going free back from it so that we're like this so then that's one two three four so the door is on the fourth five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six so that should be your spacing for this courtyard so just fill that all in with smooth stone and then we're going to need to count another 8 backwards to make a 9 by 26 space. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then that's the basic layout for this space filled in. So you can go and uh, create the border of this place, but there is uh, something that I'm going to show you before we fill in this whole spot with smooth stone. Because otherwise you'd have to uh, punch out the stone in order to make room for it later. And I figured it would just be easier doing it now than waiting and making you punch it out. So, from this door, uh, count two. So that's one, two smooth stone like this. And then place one, two, three, four, five. And then go four either side of that. One, two, three, four. 
and then one, two, three, four. And that's going to be like a really tiny pitch for playing like ball games and that that they have here. Um, fill in the center here completely white. And then either side here. Okay, this isn't actually five wide, this is six wide, so put that there and then punch out another few. Just like that. I also think that this courtyard isn't actually nine back. I think I need to make it bigger. Let me just, uh, I don't know where I got the idea that this is nine from because it clearly isn't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's ten. So we're going to need another layer like this. So that makes it a 26 by 10 spacing. Anyways, this pitch is... Um, f so once you punch out the four either side and made it like this, it should be six wide now. And then just kind of like copy what I do like this. And once you've done that, the rest of this that you've punched out is going to be grey concrete. So fill in where you didn't put white concrete with grey and that's going to be this little ball game pitch. And then the rest of this is going to be smooth stone all around this. So I'll meet you guys once I've put in all of that smooth stone. Okay so once you've done that you're going to want to uh, destroy this entire grass border around that space you've just made. And then replace this all with smooth stone, but put three layers of iron bars on top of this smooth stone. So this is going to be your uh, border going around this courtyard. So I'll see you guys once I've put in all those iron bars there as well. And now I have the iron bars bordering this entire courtyard. So what I'm going to do now is uh, place in all of the decorations that go around this courtyard. Starting with some of the uh, blackstone tables. The, f the first of those is uh, going to go three blocks away from this door. So one, two, three, like that. And then place it right there. And the next one is gonna go far away from the same door, but on the other side. So one, two, three, four. And then on the fifth block, that is where the table is gonna go. So then there's a three block space between this door and this table and a four block space between the door and this table. There are more tables but I'm going to focus on other things before I place them. Like the two giant weird red and green things that are here that I made out. I'm going to start with the red one. So grab your red terracotta and red concrete and then front, one away from this pitch on this side make a 4 by 3 space of red terracotta and then fill in the gaps with red concrete. So and then make it 3 blocks high and as you can see the border is red whoa whoa the border is red terracotta and uh, the insides are red concrete don't know if you guys oh don't know if you guys witnessed that I'm kind of a uh, I'm kind of lagging a little bit I hope this doesn't mess up the tutorial but there is like a little bit of lag some sometimes anyways uh, the green 
the green one is similar but not the exact same so you're gonna come to this side and place four blocks like this but this time it's a two by four and this here this here block is gonna be uh, a crouch space because there is a, there is a crouch space in this box Oh no, we're going to extend this one further backwards, like this. So this box is slightly bigger. And then just build it to be free high again. And then roof it off. Just like that. And that will complete this giant box. So as you can see, there's a crouch space right there and you can enter the box from that side. The next thing we're going to make is uh, the uh, decorations on the uh, far back wall. And we're going to need some stone stairs, if I still have them, yeah. And some grey carpet on top of them. Oh goodness, that's not how you spell grey in this version. And we're also going to need to get our boxes back because there are a few boxes lying around this courtyard area. Okay, so to start, right in line with this white line in the pitch, there is going to be a black stone table. Just free wide like that. Perfect center. And one away from that, there's going to be a box like that and one away from it on the other side is where I'm gonna put the uh, thing that requires the two batteries and once again I'm not entirely sure on how to replicate it it's a common theme with me and small gadgets it, trying to replicate them in Minecraft but what I did is just grab some stone and stone stairs and just made three upside down stone stairs with grey carpet on them and stone blocks underneath because I don't know how to replicate them in a in a space this small maybe you guys do but uh, I don't there are more boxes lying around here as well so we we're, we're gonna place them too the first of which is in this corner here so this 2 by 2 Go diagonal from it like this, and then there's the box. So just like that. And then the next box is directly next to this thing right here, just like that. And I think that's all of the boxes here. Yeah, there's just some uh, dining tables that we have to do now. Which I'm pretty sure I got rid of all my materials to make them with. But just gonna re get our diorite things and the white carpet. The first dining table is going um, here, so from this door, going two forwards and then two to the left, there's the table. And then the two, there's two slabs and they're both going there. And then on the other side, there is also a table. It's gonna go uh, basically in line with this box. So there should be a four block space between them. So one, two, three, four, like that. And the uh, stools are going like that. That leaves the final thing that we have to do in this courtyard area to be the uh, soul, no not soul lanterns, that's what I'm using to recreate them, but the uh, lamps. So there are lamps placed all over this courtyard space, but because I'm using iron bars to make their base, some of them like connect 
to the uh, iron bars surrounding the place like that. So if you wanted, you could use chain to make them instead. But uh, in my build, I used iron bars. So basically, for every lantern, for every lamp that we're making, all we're doing is going free high with iron bars and then placing a soul lantern on top. And the first one is here. So just diagonal from this table like that. The next one is uh, right here. So from this box, just like that. I'm sure you guys are gonna see exactly where this is because of the smooth stone having a borders. And the next one is just diagonal from this box, going free high with the end bars and then placing a soul lantern. The next one is uh, just by this courtyard, this part here. One two, three, and then the lantern. And then the next is a diagonal from this box, just uh, like that. And finally, there's uh, one more, and it's going in this corner here, rather than there being a diorite slab. And that is the whole courtyard complete, but there's like a wall surrounding the entire area. So I'm going to make that with you guys. And there's also some uh, giant watchtowers as well. Because this is a police station. So they have like watchtowers all over the place. Now, I think we should... Uh, maybe get started on the wall later no I think we should do it now I'm just gonna have to quickly go over here to see exactly what the proportions are so I'll see you guys once I have that round with the walls of the station a bit but uh the walls start um, here so count from this iron bar chain one two three and then add an extra two to this wall to make it five. In fact, no, we're gonna add an extra three to make it six. So there's a five block space between the bar and where we're gonna put the wall. Don't worry, we'll fill all of this later. For now, we're just doing this so we can fit the walls in. So make three out of diorite walls, one, two, three. And it's going to go four high, like this. And then, so as you can see, by the way, one, two, three, four, five between these two. But anyways, then we're going to place a diorite block here and then go forward one. And then place another four, one, two, three, four. And then go back again. So basically we're going to make a, a five by five space here with a 3x3 three three inside out of diorite and this is where one of the watchtowers is going I'll show you guys how to make one of the watchtowers because there are four watchtowers and you only re really need to watch how to make it once but anyways just to continue the wall so two diorite and then an andesite and then three diorite walls and then an andesite wall, and then three diorite walls again. And then this andesite is the corner where we're going to change direction. So just fill these all up to be four blocks high for now. Just like I'm doing. And we'll leave, we'll leave the watchtowers until the wall itself is completely finished. So one, two, three. As you can see, this is all four blocks high on this wall. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is 
continue the wall this way. So one, two, three out of diorite, then andesite. And then one, two, three out of diorite, and then andesite. One, two, three out of diorite, and then an andesite. And then make another watchtower base. So that's five blocks wide, leaving a three block inside. Like this. Making sure that part of it goes one forward from the wall like that. And as you can see, that's uh, the base for all of the watchtowers. So there are two more watchtowers left to place. So andesite, one, two, three, diorite, andesite, one, two, three, diorite, andesite, one, two, three, diorite, andesite. So as you can see, there are three diorite patterns here, and then a watchtower, and then another three diorite patterns here, and then a watchtower. And then there's going to be another three diorite patterns, and then we're going to change direction. So, andesite, one, two, three, diorite, andesite, one, two, three, diorite, andesite, one, two, three, diorite, andesite. And that's when we're going to change directions to start going the other way. So, one, two, three, diorite, and then the andesite, and then another three, diorite, and then the andesite. And then two diorite. And then we're going to make a watchtower base once more. Uh, this is the last watchtower. And then what we're going to do now is extend this wall all the way over to reach the watchtower. And then connect it with three diorite just like that. So now just build this wall up. And we'll extend it all the way around later. To be honest, I don't know why this wall is here. Because as you can see, there's literally nothing inside of this giant space. But it is there in the game. So we do kind of, if we want to be completely game accurate, have to put this completely useless wall here. In order to place the fourth and final watchtower properly. So just only only build this side of the wall for now because once we've finished with this entire build then we'll wrap around the whole exterior. But yeah, just, just like that. And then we're going to make this entire wall area four blocks high. So I'll see you once I've done that. Alright, so yeah, just make sure all of these walls are four blocks high going all the way around like this. And now I'm going to show you guys how to build one of the watchtowers. So to start, come to one of these two sides and break a block here and then place in an iron door. Then put a stone button either side so that you can get into the watchtower. Next we're going to need some diorite stairs and slabs. And we're also going to need some andesite stairs. Uh, the final thing we're going to need for this is grey concrete. Because that's what the ceiling of these watchtowers is going to be made of. Now, for these watchtowers, we're going to want to go and take them 9 blocks high right now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then an extra nine just like that so extend the extend all of this to be nine blocks high just taking all of the watchtower up like this and by the way every single watchtower is the same so I'm only going to show you how to build one of them because if you can build one, you can build them all. Just take the templates and build all four of them up. Which I will do off camera once I finish this one. So, 
So, as you can see, this side is now complete. We just have to get the other sides up like this to be nine blocks high. And there we go. So next thing we're going to want to do is build an extra layer. And once you have finished that layer, um, go around that layer with upside down polished andesite stairs. Just like this. And then once you've done that, we'll work on the staircase inside of the watchtower. But yeah, just like that. Go all around that 10th layer with polished andesite stairs. And then go to the entrance and then start placing your staircase, which is just pla easily placing polished diorite stairs and slabs. Just like this. Stair, and then slab in the corner, and then stair, and then a slab in the corner each time until you reach the 10th layer and once you do reach that 10th layer um, build on top of the polished andesite and another layer and then next build around the corners on this layer so like this leaving a free block space on each side and then finally build another layer but completely covering all of it finishing off the uh, main part of the watchtower and there are the windows to look out of now the final layer of this watchtower is going to be all grey concrete and it's also going to roof the watchtower off and once you've done that, that is the watchtower complete. And you only have to do that another three times. So, I'll meet you guys once I've completed all four of these watchtowers. And then we'll be able to move on to the final room, which is the garage. Alright, I've finished every watchtower now. That'll definitely take you some time to do. So the final thing that we've got to do in order to finish this build now is the garage, which is going right here. So head back to this hallway where the staircase to the underground is, and that's where we're going to begin work on the garage. Let me just clear my inventory, because now that we're here at the garage, there's not much there's not many materials that we need because that's most of the build complete now the garage is going to be nine blocks wide by ten blocks backwards and the main block we're using here is polished uh, no don't know why I said that polished black stone bricks not polished andesite and the both the ceiling and floor is going to be made of smooth stone so, uh, to get started, we're going to, uh, first of all, destroy this if it's there, because it'll be in the way. So, because of the way that this is going to work, this wall, unless you build a garage further forward, is going to be still be made out of diorite and blue concrete. And the rest is going to be made of polished blackstone bricks. But that doesn't matter, because if you feel like that's going to be a problem, then all you have to do is just, like, make the wall thicker. That won't be a problem to anything. Anyways, uh, there should be a four block space uh, to the door and each wall. And then we're just going to go nine back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that'll give you your 9 wide and 10 back space that the garage is going to be built in. So just go all along that with polished blackstone bricks. 
and replace both the ceiling and floor with smooth stone. And I'll see you guys once I've done that. Alright. I'm gonna put the lighting in real quick because it's probably really dark in here. All you have to do is be in line with the doorway and uh, count three blocks away from the doorway. So one, two, three. And then on the fourth one there's gonna be a light. So as you can see there's three blocks like that. And then uh, hold on. I think I think I've got the proportions wrong yet again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, that was my mistake. I gave the correct instructions, I just followed them wrong. You need a 9 wide by 10 space, I made a 9 by 9 space. So just like that, I'm fixing my mistake. See that's the mistake that could happen if uh, my instructions aren't followed carefully, but it's fine, I just have to... Uh, move the black concrete along as well. Hopefully you guys didn't make the same mistake, but if you did then you can watch, you can like fix it with me. But there we go. There's going to be a two block space between the two lights and a three block gap for all the walls as well. Next thing we're going to do is build the exit door and that's going to require some stone slabs smooth stone slabs some some iron blocks and then some black stained glass right there so uh, you're gonna need to go over to this side this very back wall here and destroy five blocks like this, the middle five blocks. Now this very center is going to be completely iron blocks, as are the two very edges, but these two here are going to be made up of two smooth stone slabs on top of each other and then black stained glass. And then that's the exit door to the garage done. Next thing we're going to make in the garage is a uh, a blackstone table and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last blackstone table in this build so once again get your polished blackstone and come to this corner we're also going to need some red never brick slabs because there is a toolbox here which I'm representing with red never brick slab because I can't build a tool block a toolbox that small but yeah, it's one away from that wall, and then a red and brick slab, and then a two block gap, and then we're building our polished black stone table, just like that. And then the next decoration that we're going to make is going to be a... Hold on, there's a, there's a weird thing that I don't know how to describe, like the same as one in the basement but in but it's red this time and that's going here it's just going to be two stairs facing each other just right there anyways we're going to need to get our polished andesite shelving out and free away from this here we're just making our usual shelving like that so three away from this space and two away from there. Now, the last thing in the garage is a car. And that's Doggy's car, of course. What I did for my car that's in this garage is... It's a bit big, but like I can't build cars in Minecraft. So I followed a tutorial from TSMC on how to make a police car and that's the car that's outside in the original so I followed that tutorial 
And then I did it again, but I recolored it to be red. But you guys can do whatever you want for the car that's going to be in here. Basically, what I did, I'm going to show you right now. I'm just going to get all of the things that I need real quick. So, you guys are going to need all of these things as, as well. So, just uh, prepare with me. Uh, Grey concrete, red wool, red carpet, glass paint, stone button, item frame. And then you're going to need blocks of iron and red concrete. And a sign. Block of iron. Red concrete. And a sign. Whatever sign you think looks best. I'll just use an og one. Okay, so... We're going to start by uh, finding a space here. Yeah, it's uh, going to be uh, two blocks away from this exit door here. So... Yeah, you see where I've put this? Uh, just by this here, and then two blocks behind it. Going to place two blocks of red wool, and then grey carpet. No, grey concrete, and then two red wool, and then grey concrete, and then a red wool. Hold it real quick. No, we're not. We're going to place one red wool, and then two grey concrete. No, one grey concrete. Okay, I'm I'm clearly failing here. No. Just do what I did here, place one red wool, one grey concrete, two red wool, one grey concrete, one red wool, and then border it like this. And then place the red wool all inside there. And then we're going to place some red wool on top of this here, this back grey concrete. And then place glass panes with red carpet inside of it like that. Then we're going to place red carpet all on top of what we've just built. And then also on top of this part here. Then we're going to put some stone buttons on the car. I've got to give credit by the way, this is the tiniest car that I've seen that still looks good in Minecraft. Uh, place the iron frames there with iron blocks in them and then the same at the back but with red concrete in them and then uh, the light for the license plate which is the sign you can really put whatever you want I put D 0 G 6 dash Y which is just a fancy way of spelling doggy and that's the car if you guys want to make the police car that will go outside of this build, then you should probably just follow TSMC's tutorial because that is exactly the police car that I made for the original. Either that or you could use your own police car. Either works. But anyways, we can go outside of this station build now and see that it's um, finished from the inside but not from the out. Now for the outside of this build, what we're going to need to do is go around all of it with the jail cell room pattern. So come to this, start here and just extend it all the way back and then you'll hit this side, just go around it and then don't go around the garage. The garage is uh, the same pattern on the outside. I checked because I did go around it the first time around and then I saw that you're not supposed to do that. But yeah, just go around this whole build with a different wall pattern, which no doubt is going to take you some time. Well, until you reach the jail cell room. 
don't go around the jail cell room because that already has the wall pattern that you want. Okay, uh, for this part, you uh, you could either make it just a wall like that, or you could extend it all the way backwards, like this. Just keep in mind, unless you're adapting the station for your own uses, there will be absolutely nothing in this giant space. Which, I, I, I will always wonder why it's here. But, yeah, you've, you've just seen me do the base for what we're going to do. But this pattern here is what we're making just all the way around the build. So just go all the way around like this. Just with that pattern. And that's basically it done. I don't think I need to do that because I've got what it looks like when it's completed over here and I've shown you guys what to do. So once you're done with that it should look like this. Ignore all of this. You've, you've not built this yet. So yeah the entire exterior is just this jail cell room pattern and that's exactly what we want. The uh, shape should just be a giant rectangle with the garage just kind of sticking out. And you guys see this place. You can do whatever you want now. But in game, it's basically from the garage and then onto the main road. And then if you want, you could put a police car there because there is a police car in the uh, game because you pull up to the station in it. Oh, and also, don't forget to put buttons like this once you've uh, filled in the walling around the doorway. And if you want, you could put a sign saying police station or something. The exterior is all up to you. You never see most of it. And I don't know what this is. There's just a weird stone sculpture outside of the police station. And I'm not really sure how to replicate it. But yeah, this is basically the entire map. So, well done for sticking around through this tutorial, and I hope it helped you. Because uh, I'm going to be making a lot more of these for all of the piggy chapters. And the next one we're going to do is gallery, which I get the feeling is going to be a confusing one to do. So, hopefully you guys were able to follow along with this tutorial, and I'm going to see you in my next video.